guys welcome back for another video for dkcgi.net today we're going to take a look at how we can build a realistically looking floor which it's not going to be made from a actual texture but it's actually going to have geometry we're going to do this by just using one simple script which has pretty much been the standard for uh, making wooden flooring before we start you guys are actually going to have to go ahead and download this script either from um, scripts uh, spot or you can simply just go ahead and visit cg-source.com and from here you can download this script called floor generator now this is a really awesome script and with it while you're at the site you, you well basically you're going to have to uh, first uh, register which is really simple and fast it won't cost you anything and then you'll be able to uh, download the floor generator plugin here and while you're at it you might as well pick up multi texture map and unique material IDs uh, in this video we're gonna use the floor generator and the multi texture map to uh, get the result we want for our floors let's see how I'm gonna go back to max and basically this is what i have right now a simple scene if i'm i basically just render it out so i don't have to wait for the render so this is what i'm ha uh, what i have in my scene as you can see it's a very simple scene where we just have one uh door which lets light come in and a window the lighting system is very um well how should i say this um very primitive as i only have one v-ray sun here oh yeah for some reason it won't select it well one sun and then i have a few why isn't it there we go i have one v-ray sun which ha uh, has been enabled and I have 24 subdivisions for the shadow so I get a better uh, shadow cast or actually uh, better quality in the shadows and I have two lights here there you go two lights which are just v-ray lights that have been positioned at the edges of the window and the door and they've been converted into skylight portals so the light knows how to behave better uh, other than that, the entire scene is simply a gray material uh, and the floor, as you can see, it's a great material. So, let's see how we can go ahead and from this make a really nice floor that we can use for this scene. First things first, the way that uh, the floor generator works is you have to activate it first the easiest way would be just go ahead once you've downloaded the file just drag and drop it inside 3ds max it should right away open up a window like this now the way the floor generator works is it makes geometry from a spline so basically what i have to do right now is go ahead and simply make a spline from my walls so i'm going to select my walls right here i'm going to isolate them by pressing alt q there we go and now i'm going to go ahead and select my border uh, with it i can select the entire uh, lower border and click on the create shape from selection button when here, I gotta make, you guys have to make sure that you press the linear shape type because if you go with smooth, all the end parts or all the corners are going to be smooth and that's not something you want. So go ahead, make it linear and name it board base or whatever you want to name it and press OK. With this, we have made one spline over here there we go 
So the spline is where the wall is. Now, here is how the actual plugin works. You have to have the uh, board spline selected. And now, with it selected, you just press the create button in the flow generator. Right away, you're going to notice that you actually have some geometry in your scene. Right now, the size is kind of too big because these boards or planks are simply ginormous. So we want to make them smaller. The way this works is at the first thing you can choose is the size. So instead of having a 1000 length, I can make it smaller with let's say 90 and the width instead of 70 I'm going to drop it down to 20 now here's the funny thing we actually changed some of the values but nothing really happened in the viewport why well it's quite easy because as you can see right here underneath the create button we have an update button and by pressing it is going to update it with all the changes you've made in the parameters so in case you want to have a real-time ch uh, change log you just have to press this interactive update so now whenever I change something let's say make it smaller it changes right away we can see the change so I'm gonna bring it back to 90 and there we go now we're getting some somewhere okay the next thing uh, we can see right here is these L buttons that are kind of pressed now if I press this one it's going to unlock the second field which this one says max and this one says min that minimum size is basically just allowing you to have some randomization in the length of the planks so in case uh, I want to have some of them longer while some of them are smaller I can change it right here so let's make one of them be I don't know, 65 or 70 this way right away I can see that some of the planks are kind of bigger some are smaller if I'm gonna make it more visible I'm going to make this one bigger and there we go now if I zoom in uh, closer you're gonna notice another thing uh, the edges of the planks kind of have a little bit of a bevel on them so if you go at the last part where you can change some of the parameters you're gonna see that we have a bevel and an extrude here the extrude is basically telling you how tall or how short the extrude is going to be so let's leave it at one but the bevel on the other hand you can change it so let's say 0.2 would mean that we have a smaller bevel the bevels are very good uh, because they kind of have a tendency to hold light so when light kind of bounces off them it looks better and it looks more realistic as we have some light going in the crevices between two boards and while we're talking about the crevices or the gaps we can even control that as you can see this gap length is basically telling you exactly that if I put it at one we're gonna have a much bigger gap between all the planks which in some cases might be what you want to do so if it's an older parquet or uh, I don't know some wooden planks or whatever you might want to have a bigger gap length if not you can just make it smaller or whatever suits your needs also we can have some variation in the width so if let's say at least one is 20 the other one is 10 we can have some variation in the width also and the spread is basically telling you which is going to take into account more the minimum or the maximum at 50 it's mixing it up at 50%. Uh, let's say if we put it down at 20, we're gonna get a lot more uh, smaller or 10 uh, minimum width planks instead of the maximum strength. So 
gonna back, put it back to 05 and get an even distribution. Now, the next thing we can have here is variation per board. So this basically is going to allow you to rotate or offset or even tilt some of the boards. For example, if I increase the tilt, you can see that the boards start kind of moving upwards. There we go. And let me just see if I can change this color because it's no. Uh, whatever. There we go. Now we can see it better. So with the tilt, we can kind of tilt the floors, the floor boards a bit. So they look like it's a, an older parquet. So not a bad thing if you want to get a bit more realism out of it, but just try to keep it on the realistic side. The next thing is the rotation and the offset, but these are kind of going to be kind of difficult to see here because the gap is so small that they don't have a lot of room to maneuver. But if we want to go ahead and allow them to overlap with each other, sorry, for example, like give them some space, we can see it right away that they start to rotate and now the entire flooring looks like it's a bit broken up. And the offset is simply going to move them around a bit. Just like in, with the size, we can go ahead and put a minimum and maximum and control it with the spread. But for this, I'm just going to uh, zero it out. I don't want it to tilt. I don't want it to do anything. And the last uh, bit of parameters we can uh, use is the direction. As you can see it right here, if I type in, let's say, 45 degrees, it is go going to uh, take the entire floor and rotate it at 45. If I want them to uh, go ahead and do a 90, I can use it like this. So I can basically control how the planks are going to be made. So, let's continue uh, towards the texturing part and see how we can texture the floor generator. I'm going to turn off the file right here. And now I'm going to go in the material editor. In here, I'm going to take... Oh, let me just clear it up. There we go. I have a simple V-Ray material. I'm just going to take a new one. It doesn't have to be a V-Ray material, you can use any material as long as you download the multi-texture map from CG Source. You should have the ability to go inside the diffuse. So go inside the diffuse and from here just try and find the multi-texture map. Here you go, right here. Multi-texture, press OK. And you get this kind of parameter uh, outline. Right away, you can see that uh, it's from CG Source, and we have some uh, well parameters that we can change here, but not not uh, pretty much anything else because basically we don't have any maps loaded in. So before we start with going deeper we gotta put in some maps the way you do this is by clicking on this button open files by clicking it it's going to ask you to find file or files to open taking uh, into consideration that this went inside the diffuse part so we're gonna have to choose some maps that are gonna be used for diffuse I have 14 maps on my side and let me just show you how they look like these diffuse maps are basically just planks they are they are all the same size being chopped up in uh, Photoshop and they're very high resolution as you can see they're 
3991 by 378 pixels. So now I have them loaded up. All I gotta do is click and drag them on the floor object. Click on show shaded material viewport. And right away, we can see that all of those planks have been put inside our floor geometry. And seeing as how I had 14 different planks, they've been randomized on the placement. Now I'm going to unhide everything. And now if I render out something, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to put on a render, but before we do it, I want to go ahead and just uh, select a region so I don't have to wait for the entire thing. So we can save some time. There you go. Render this region over here. And right away, I can see that while it's rendering, the planks are kind of looking realistic and they're looking nice. There we go. So let's say that I liked how they look, but they're kind of too uniform. They don't have any variation. Well, you're in luck. Inside the multi texture, you have a color adjustment field. Here, you can basically take uh, any map and give it a bit of a randomization. For example, you can control the gamma. It's usually put at one, but let's say you want to make it darker. If you go ahead, you can make it a two. This way, the entire image is going to be darker. Here we go. If I render it out right now, the entire image is darker, but still quite uniform as there isn't a lot of variation in it. But for example, if I go ahead and in random, I drop in a one. Now this time we're going to have a bit of a different situation because some of the planks are going to be darker while others are going to be lighter. And in this uh, case, we have a plus or minus of one and with a base gamma of two, that means 50% of the planks are going to be gamma one and 50% of the, the planks are going to be gamma three. So I put them back at one. So we have a bit more realistic. Uh, let's go ahead with 70. See how this is going to go. No, 70 is going to make it a lot bigger. There you go. Now, with this, we're going to get 80% to be gamma 1, while about 20% are going to be gamma 0. But that's not very good. So let's go with. 0.2. There you go. About 20% are going to be lighter on the gamma while everything else is normal. Now, once we have this fixed up, it doesn't stop here. For example, we can go ahead and change the hue. So with a hue of 0, I can color it by just putting a random number here, 20. And now some of the planks are gonna be colored. As you can see, some are actually greener, some are green, uh, reddish, other ones are yellow. It's, it's a nice touch, especially if you wanna use it for not wood, but let's say some kind of pebbles or rocks, not a bad thing for wood though. Not so much, so I'm gonna bring it back to zero. And the last one would be the situa uh, saturation. The overall 100, let's say uh, we wanna put in a bit of variation. We drop in a 25, so now some of them are gonna be lighter, while others are gonna be darker. Now this would be ideal for wooden flooring, as you can see right here. 
it's clearing up and the wooden floor looks good so with this we have a nice looking floor let me go I'm gonna put it on a full render we have a nice looking floor like here and it looks realistic and the best thing is that this is not a texture but it's rather geometry so even if you want to use it for simulation or anything that you might think of it would be a good match All right. so the last thing that I would like to mention before I head out is that whenever you're using a floor generator to get your flooring you there is one thing that you might wa not want to forget and that is the fact that if you're gonna be using this for a base you're gonna have to go ahead and make just one more step and that's the following let me just rotate it a bit down and that is to select the line so select the spline that we use to make the floor and from it just drop in an extrude modifier there you go extrude 0 0.1 why well simply because the light when it comes in the room it some cases it's, it can go through the cracks and simply disappear with the step we made like the last one with the extrude we now have a floor beneath the boards so we can have some light bouncing back and giving us more of a AO effect on the boards there we go now they're cleaning up and we can see a lot better on in between them so with this we actually get a pretty decent floor now with a bit more tweaking around we can get even better results for example i've just used a multi-texture for the diffuse here as you can see it right here but i have no uh, reflections so in case I want to get some reflections going I'm gonna have to go back into the same material and there we go cancel go back into the same material go back into the maps and from here just copy the multi texture put it in the reflection paste it here and go open files now instead of the diffuse I can just check or select all my reflection maps there you know mix them at let's say 50% with the original and now if I render it out I should get a pretty nice reflective surface but with like with all things whenever you add reflection it's going to take a bit more time to do it there we go it's reflecting is rather nice oh yeah and one last thing would be you don't forget to turn on the frontal reflections because if you don't it's basically going to make it uh, look like a freaking glass there we go now with it we can get some nice reflections.